Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth, another podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. Hello everybody and welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and Corey. Hello everyone. Today on Unlocking Your Truth we're going to be uh, talking to a guest and it's going to be all about the synthesis effect. The synthesis effect which is a a transformational process that we're going to learn all about. That's just like photosynthesis. Well, I suppose photosynthesis is a transformational process, isn't it? I'm not sure it's quite the same, though. Oh, wow. Yeah, so listeners, um, if you want to send us in a question as we go through our conversation, as always, you can call, you can send an email to info at drlesliephillips.com or you can call 604-504-7441, extension 4142. And if you're a new listener to the show, uh, that Unlocking Your Truth is a talk show all about metaphysics and spirituality. Every week we have a different topic that we discuss under that general umbrella. And we also like to answer your questions and help you with your personal life path. And when we've got a guest on, we we recruit our guests to assist you as well. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me no, no extra charge, right? Yeah, no extra charge. Yeah. So 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 then, without further ado, let me introduce today's guest. So his name is John McGrail. PhD, and he is a renowned hypnotherapist, success coach, spiritual teacher, and a leading media expert on the topic of personal improvement. And he has integrated his 30 years of teaching, coaching, and mentoring with his clinical work to create his own signature process, which is called the synthesis process. And like I explained, it it creates a profound transformation. Sounds a bit like a sci- sci- sci-fi movie. Mm. <laughs> so, um, Dr. McGrail, um, his writing and his expertise is featured in numerous national publications, online outlets, radio, television, and he's also written a book on the synthesis effect. So, uh, Dr. John McGrail, welcome to the show. Dr. Leslie and Corey, thank you very much. It's a joy to be with you. I'm going to have to get a doctor, I guess, to be doctor as well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, John, do you, would you like to tell us a little bit more about what, what your synthesis process is? Well, I, I'd be delighted. Uh, actually, it is very much about the combination of a variety of different techniques methods, traditions, and models, and as the term synthesis suggests, it brings them together, disparate ingredients, in order to create a stronger and more powerful whole, and that's why I named the process synthesis, because it is very much like photosynthesis, as Corey was mentioning at the outset of the show. Uh, Plants, green plants and trees, take carbon dioxide and light and through this amazing process, transform it into oxygen and energy for themselves. And that's what synthesis is all about. It's creating a stronger whole from disordered ingredients. And so I, or we, in the process, take some of the latest discoveries in in quantum physics and quantum field theory and ancient spirituality and bring them together. And as you mentioned, it does create a, a very powerful transformative process. Mm-hmm. And how does it work exactly? Well, it works by creating first and foremost an understanding. Most of the people that I work with, well, let's, let's, let's start even more generally. All of us have stuff. We all have issues that hold us back at one time or another and sometimes over many t- periods of our lives. And we 
very often don't understand where it came from or how we got that way, and we often think that we are alone, that there's something wrong with us. And I can tell you that almost every single client or workshop student or seminar student that I deal with, once we get to the point where, hey, I convince them we all have issues, every single person, I don't care how enlightened you are, there is going to be time or times when you, when you feel blocked. And there's nothing wrong with you, it's just part of the human experience. So the first thing we do is to create that awareness, hey, I'm okay, I'm human, and here's how it happened. I, I instill an understanding of how the mind works, how it evolved, how the human mind evolved, and how an individual mind works, and why we're all inherently resistant to change. Even when we want change, we know it would be good for us, we'll feel better, we'll live more powerfully. We are in, it's in our DNA to resist change. It's just part of the human experience. So that's where it begins. It begins with creating awareness and understanding and the knowledge that it, that it can be fixed because there's nothing that can't be changed. That's how it all starts. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because I used to work with people helping them quit smoking. And the first thing I told them is that you're not going to quit smoking. Do not quit. Just postpone, because quitting is such a is such a line in the sand. It's it's a it's 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 a scary thing. But everybody can can postpone a cigarette it, almost indefinitely and just keep postponing it. And that is that's a lot easier than quitting. And so it's it's a whole it's a whole concept on on the mind having critical concept critical concepts that are hard to break in one way, but easy to break if you give them something else that's stronger, a stronger has a stronger uh, drive. Um, that's absolutely true, Corey. And, and, you know, when people also begin to understand the fact that most of our behaviors, our attitudes, our values, our beliefs, our patterns, habits, good or bad, happy or sad, positive or negative, reside in what we would call the subconscious part of the mind which operates automatically on its own, and that the conscious part of the mind, the part of the mind that wants to, say, quit smoking or stop smoking, is a very small percentage in comparison. The conscious mind is only really about 10% of the total volume of the average human mind, whereas you have the subconscious that is 90%, much more powerful, and uh, works very much, uh, at least on the surface of the way it looks, it works very much like a computer. We get programmed into these patterns and habits and beliefs limiting beliefs or not, fears and phobias. And yes, the conscious mind can say, okay, I'm going to stop tomorrow. That's it. I'm not smoking anymore. We'll just use your example because it's such a good one. And the subconscious mind says, well, no, that's not our programming. So that dynamic is very, very difficult to overcome, 10% versus 90%. It's like a, a tug of war with 10 people on one team and 90 people on the other team. Eventually, those 90 people are going to wear the 10 people down. But if you just trick it, as you mentioned, the subconscious into postponing. Let's just make a little bit of a change, and then we'll just keep doing that, which is very much like the process, and I help probably 100 to 150 people quit smoking a year, very much like the same process. The subconscious mind, if you get through that internal resistance, that critical filter that says no, uh, the subconscious mind is more than willing to make changes because it, it, it's also about three years old in its sophistication. So we think about the fact that we have a three-year-old running our lives most of the time. It's pretty scary. <laughs> but that is, in fact, the way the subconscious works. So your point is very well taken. Mm -hmm. So, so the, actually, in hypnosis, that's all you're really doing. People think they'll come to you and you'll say, you are going to quit smoking today. And they walk out <laughs> and you never have another. It doesn't work that way. It's, 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 uh, hypnosis is just giving the subconscious alternate uh, alternate uh, choices, is it not? Well, in effect, hypnosis really is just a state of consciousness that has the effect of putting the critical filter or the critical part of the mind that would say no, and I'll give you an example in just a second. There's part of our mind that compares the conscious inputs with the subconscious programming. This is somewhat metaphorical. But think of a good movie. You go into a good movie and you get sucked in by the movie and you're having a real emotional experience. You're feeling sadness. You're feeling happiness, joy, whatever it is. The feelings you're feeling are very real. They are generated by the subconscious, the three-year-old. The reason you're having those feelings is because a good film, like a good TV show or a book, which puts us into this natural state of consciousness we call hypnosis. 
And in that state of consciousness, the part of the mind that would normally say, what is the matter with you? Why are you crying? You know that person is not dead. You just saw him on late night talk show last night. Come on, get a grip. That part of the mind sort of goes offline for a little bit. And the subconscious mind, being an innocent child, essentially, will be more than happy to listen to alternatives. It's almost like you say with the smoking habit. You know, you learn two plus two is five, youngster. You know it's really not a very good thing for you to do. But I know you don't know that, but try this instead. Try two plus two is four. And so what hypnosis really is is a state of consciousness that creates a very open and receptive state of mind in which we can have the subconscious unlearn the patterns, habits, beliefs that aren't working, and essentially reteach it bit by bit. You're right, it's not magic, it's a process. But it, it's a process that happens very quickly. And before you know it, the subconscious mind is playing new programs. And now you're a non-smoker. You're not postponing anymore, you just don't do it. Mm. Now, now you, you said something earlier, John, that I've never heard anybody say before. Um, you, and I don't know if you meant it literally or just metaphorically. It's in our DNA to resist change. Did you, yes. did you mean it literally or metaphorically? Well, both, actually. I'm not sure if there's a resistance gene in our DNA, but since we became modern humans many thousands of years ago, we have become very accustomed to hanging on to the familiar. Just think of our ancestors. They find a beautiful green valley with lots of water and food and shelter, and they, they get very, very comfortable there. And after some number of years or whatever, another tribe comes in and says, you know what, we want this valley. We want you to move out. They're not real happy about that because they really like where they are. And over millennia, what happens is that we get very, very ingrained in our patterns. If we think of the metaphorical computer that the subconscious mind is, we get really ingrained with our patterns. And it is very, very difficult to overcome that resistance. It's called homeostasis. Uh, even when we know the change would be good. A great example is, is someone that's undergoing abuse in a relationship, uh, both men and women, by the way. Uh, you know, we, we wonder why a battered wife or husband keeps going back to the abusive mate over and over and over again. There's this cycle of violence. And yet it happens, sometimes for years. And in doing research, because I was asked to write an article about this uh, um, a few years ago, in doing research on the, on the phenomenon, it dawned on me that it's exactly that same homeostasis process, clinging to the familiar. The fear of leaving the abuser is greater than the fear of staying. And only when the fear of leaving becomes less great than the fear of staying can you actually have an intervention and get that person to leave. Now, that applies all across the behavioral spectrum. It really does. Uh, whether whether a habit is good for us or bad for us, we'll cling to it. Whether a belief is, is, is a, an empowering belief or a limiting belief, we will cling to it. And so in order to make these changes and make them stick, we need a way to get by that internal resistance, that homeostasis, that critical filter. And these tools and techniques, hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming and some of the other tools that I've developed on my own in the synthesis process do that in a very powerful way. So, yes, I did mean it literally, as well as metaphorically, because I don't know if they've discovered a gene for resistance, but it's certainly ingrained as a meme in our behavior as a, as a species. Mm -hmm. So, you've talked about um, the synthesis process involving hypnosis and NLP. Can you mm -hmm. explain a bit more about the, the, the uh, different uh, tools and techniques that you've brought together? in a package that um, help people? And also, maybe part two of that question is, so it sounds like you can help people um, in all sorts of ways, people who want to quit smoking, people who want to um, quit an abusive relationship. So maybe you can also expand upon the, the types of conditions and situations that you, this process can help. Sure. Well, there, there are many, many tools and, and techniques. Hypnosis is one of the primary ones I use. Meditation is a very powerful tool for once we've created the change to maintain it. Neuro-linguistic programming is, as much as can be, a technology that was developed about 40 years ago or 45 years ago that really helps us understand how and why we behave and communicate the way we do. And, of course, communication is such a basic part of behavior. And in that understanding... Uh, there, there are many techniques that can be used. And 
what they're all designed to do is help the mind get out of its own way, help the mind overcome the internal natural resistance that we all have at some level or another, some people more than others, but in whatever way works for that given individual, once we overcome that internal resistance, then we can begin the relearning, or if you don't mind the metaphor, reprogramming that subconscious mind. And yes, these tools and techniques, um, NLP and hypnotherapy are very, very powerful. And there are so many others. Emotional freedom technique, which is a tapping technique that borrows from uh, acupuncture and kinesiology. Uh, I've developed some, some techniques that are just proprietary that combine some of these things. But they all are designed to do one thing, to help our mind get out of its own way. And they do work across the spectrum of human behavior. Uh, there's virtually no behavioral habit or pattern attitude or belief that cannot be changed with the right assistance and most people are going to need assistance and with the right tools and of course everybody responds differently which is why it's it's good for a therapist or, or like an artist to have a, a, a very varied palette of tools and techniques and in synthesis we go back to some of the ancient healing techniques of the shamanistic tribal people that have been around for as old as long as human civilization, like basic meditations, there are so many ways of using meditation as a tool. Uh, to some of the latest discoveries uh, in quantum physics and quantum field theory, the nature of matter and energy, the fact that energy or our thoughts are in fact a form of energy that do have a direct effect upon our reality. When you bring all these together in just the right way, and that's where the art of it comes into play, uh, people can change their lives dramatically and profoundly and permanently. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a really great process. So, yeah, it works. Ac- it really does work across the spectrum of human behavior. Feelings, habits, patterns, beliefs, fears, phobias, um, uh, increasing performance at school, at work, at play. It's not always about getting rid of something negative. Sometimes I work with a lot of professional athletes who are already at the top of their game, and when you get to that level, the difference between good and great it's almost always in the mind, and it's almost always something that, you know, that people need help to overcome. So uh, the mind is an amazing, amazing, miraculous uh, instrument or entity, uh, and once we learn how to help it work the way we want it to, we can literally create the life of our dreams instead of living the one we thought we were stuck with. Well, that's that's very true. I mean, um just to go back a little bit of what you're saying, I know Richard Bandler, I've, I've spoken with him, and, and like he says, uh, if you only have one tool in your tool belt, like a hammer, well, then you're only going to be either putting nails in or taking nails out. And uh, well, it's, it's true. And, and uh, I, I talk to healers about that as well. You know, somebody's doing, uh, you know, studies EFT or they've studied the Reiki or they've studied whatever, or even hypnosis, and that's all they can do. When somebody comes to you and they're resisting that, that, that treatment in any way, shape, or form, what do you do? You have to send them somewhere else. And, and I believe that um, uh, somebody that works with people trying to help and heal need to have a whole bunch of ways that they can that they can get into that into that person's mind. And I agree with you wholeheartedly that it, it's all it's all there. It's it's all all doable, and it's such a, a wonderful uh, wonderful to hear somebody else uh, think the way I do about that. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Corey. Of course, Richard Manlow was one of the creators of NLP. Oh, well, yeah, of course, yeah. And- yeah, and uh, well, for those people who, who may not know that, uh, and yes, if you're if you're going to do this, and, and you're going to, it's your profession. Uh, there are two parts of it. One is the joy of, of helping people heal, and I think that's a calling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that I was called to it, and it's a very deep spiritual uh, connection with me. But the other side of it is that it's a business, and if someone comes to you and you can't help them then one, yes, you have to send them somewhere else, which isn't good for them or your business. And pretty soon, you know, you're out of business. So you want to have a a wide, uh, a varied uh, set of tools and techniques so that you can deal with different sensibilities and different value sets. And that's why I've spent so many years uh, studying so many different uh, modalities, and, and I bring them all together in this process called synthesis. 
which, uh, as I mentioned, uh, works really, really well for, for a great many people. It's not a silver bullet because there's no such thing, but uh, I totally agree with you, Corey. Yeah. Great point. And it's interesting because when you think about it, if you look at steel, steel is very strong. But if you take iron, one of the components, iron is strong as well, but doesn't have the lasting capability of steel and, and all these things. So when you put things together, they become much stronger, much, much more um, able to do what they're meant to do. It's, it's, mm. Thank you so much. Okay. The, term synthesis. the other thing that you mentioned that I think bears repeating is that everybody can do this. And for the listeners out there that may be doubting it, I promise you, you have everything you need within you to create whatever change in your life you wish to create. Mm. It's probably going to require some assistance because of our, and we all have it, natural resistance, but it can be done. Mm-hmm. So that's like the number one message when I do a show like this is to just get people thinking about the fact that I don't have to live this way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely true. So listeners, you heard it. You have, the, you have everything you need to change your life, to create the life that you really want. Go and be healed. So we're, we're going we're gonna to go to a short break now, John. But um, when we come back, we will continue the conversation. Welcome back, listeners. You're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and Corey on CIVL on 101.7 FM. And we're here every Tuesday from 7 to 8 o'clock talking about metaphysics and spirituality. And tonight we're talking about the synthesis effect with Dr. John McGrail. And before we went to a break, uh, John was talking about how every single one of us has the power to change our reality, to change our lives, and to create the life that we truly want that would be truly fulfilling and so tell us a bit more John because I believe your methods are based upon this idea that we create our own reality Um, tell us a bit more about that well sure uh, Dr. Leslie (coughs) when I say we create our own reality a lot of people kind of look at me with a a John decide but the truth of the matter is in in the latest cutting edge scientific discoveries over the last 20 or 30 years, mostly in the field of quantum physics and quantum uh, field theory, the experimentation, you know, we we are a very empirical culture. We have to see in order to believe, which is exactly the opposite way the indigenous cultures think, which we could say the indigenous cultures are, as a rule, more spiritually based in nature than we are. We're much more empirically and materially based. And I find it rather ironic because we've been taught to think in a very certain way. I'll believe it when I see it. Show Mm -hmm. me. And if you can't prove it, if you can't show me, it's not science, and I won't believe it. And ironically, using that very same scientific rigor, empiricism, through extremely uh, disciplined experimentation over many, many years, scientists have proven, as I mentioned earlier, that we are, first of all, nothing more than energy, that all energy is connected, and that the energy of our thoughts, our feelings, have a direct effect on our outcomes. And if you want to do the research and do some of the reading of um, these experiments, just blow your mind. They're hard to even visualize. But, but ironically, they're sort of proving that the way the indigenous peoples of the world, and perhaps more spiritually based peoples, uh, the native peoples, regardless of where they are located, uh, they all think pretty much the same way. They believe in order to see, rather than having to see in order to believe. And I find it ironic and, and, and somewhat... Uh, delightful that modern Western science is now proving what the ancient cultures, the spiritual cultures have known since the dawn of time, uh, that we do in fact create our own reality. So your thoughts, your feelings, the choices you make on a day-to-day basis, most of which are subconsciously generated and most of which are reactionary in nature, uh, do have a huge effect on your outcomes. And so if you change your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions, you are going to change your outcomes. And that's essentially what I mean by we create our own reality, which is just substantiated by science. But that's what the ancient indigenous cultures have known uh, for as long as, mm-hmm. as they've been around. Yes. So we're, we're starting to, to see a marriage of modern science and ancient spirituality, which is also a big part of the synthesis process. 
wonderful and uh, and it's very empowering isn't it because if if all of that is true and we take responsibility for ourselves then we can create whatever we want responsibility exactly should, responsibility should be a four-lettered word <laughs> <laughs> the way people, some people think about it. Yeah, that's true. Well, well, all we mean is just take take charge of your life, really. Take charge of your thoughts. Take charge of your uh, emotional reality. Um, and in doing that, you'll get different results, as uh, as Doctor John says. So, uh, exactly. A you know, there's a there's. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'm, I pause. Go ahead. Now, there, there's a a parlance in in neuro linguistic programming. We're talking about Bandler and his partner in NLP. And one of the premises of NLP is that in order for a person to create that change, they have to start or stop living at what, what is called at effect. Oh, life is happening to me. Oh, woe is me. I'm the victim. And they have to, or we have to start living what they call at cause. I am the cause of my outcomes, and therefore I am going to take the responsibility for those outcomes and the responsibility for how my life goes. And when you start living at cause, it becomes a very, very powerful, energetic process, and I just wanted to, to sort of um, underline what Dr. Leslie just said about taking responsibility. That is the key to the castle in creating change and transformation in your life. The process is great, but until a client takes that responsibility and decides to commit to themselves, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> There's a no, no question there. Yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, do you have to understand in in psychology or psychiatry everybody tries to get down to the crux of why you know why somebody is acting out the way they're acting now in other words who programmed you why did they program you that way and all that um I, i'm of the belief that you don't necessarily have to know what the issue is but you can treat the person by again putting in something different to choose i know bandler does it really well with um, his uh, his uh, phobia cures i mean he he just goes in there and just cleans them up I mean, he doesn't even have to know what they are he can just work with somebody on it uh, is that the is that something that you you believe in as well or do you need to find an actual cause or something well yes and yes uh, I, I actually do believe that very often you can just treat symptomatically and through a process, again, this is partly an NLP process called reframing, you can reframe that reality and, and change the strategies that you're using to create whatever new outcomes you wish. And sometimes, and with some people, it really is necessary to get down to the cause. Because once, if we know the cause, then there's a whole other set of tools that we can use to diffuse the emotional charge behind that cause. So it can work both ways, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's both a science and an art to this process, not my process, but any healing process, any therapeutic process. You know, the tools are there, the science is there, we know hypnosis works, we know NLP works, we know that the, you know, the, the way the human mind has evolved and, and operates, we, we know all that, that's the science. The art is being able to figure out what the best course of action is going to be for a given individual because everybody's different. Everybody has different values. Everybody has different sensibilities. Everybody has a different belief system. And the art of it is, is learning or, or divining or being, being gifted with the ability to say, okay, we're going to take a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this. And in that, in so doing, get the person the results they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So sometimes treating symptomatically, it works extremely well, and sometimes it doesn't. We always start there, or at least that's how I was originally trained. Always start with just treating the symptoms because that's the easiest way. But if it doesn't work, then you have to go perhaps and find what's causing it. And it's usually not very hard, quite frankly. Mm. No, not really. No. And, and I would say that's where the intuition of the practitioner comes in as well, working intuitively with a client as opposed to just um, logically. Um, right. Now, I wanted to go back to, I guess, what we were talking about a little bit at the beginning. But, and you, you sent in some um, information about yourself to us, and uh, there was a term on there that I was like, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> 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 <Damn>. <laughs> Practicing.
practical enlightenment. I, I yeah. really, really enjoyed that because I feel that, you know, that's what I teach too is practical enlightenment. You know, that people yeah. have this expectation that they're going to re- reach this amazing state and they will never have a problem ever again and yet really what enlightenment is is having um, a toolkit like you're talking about that you can use to deal with the ups and downs that naturally occur when you're alive in a body on this planet which is a planet based on polarity <laughs> so so yeah I'm, I tell us about your practical enlightenment and uh because pra- I loved that. I'm practically enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> practically. <laughs> well, we, we are on a planet based in polarity, and we are a species. When we take physical form, we, we, we inherit the simple but very powerful concept upon which all humans evaluate the quality of their life, and that, that concept is contrast, positive and negative, right. essentially. And I base my definition of enlightenment on the Buddha, who said enlightenment is the end of suffering. That's the, that's the simplest, most elementary, clean definition of enlightenment that I've been able to find, and, and I, I, I really looked long and hard to find it. I really love that, the end of suffering. Now, part of being human is suffering. It's mm-hmm. inherent in our existence. But with dedication and commitment to oneself with a desire, we can learn to live virtually free of suffering. And that's what the synthesis process is all about. It's about teaching people, giving them the tools to learn to live virtually free of suffering, which means a lot of the stuff that used to bother you doesn't bother you anymore. And when you do get sideways, when things do go south, you have the ability of pulling yourself back out of it much more quickly, and those periods are much less intense and painful than they used to be. And so life becomes very, very, it becomes this beautiful flow, if you will. You really begin to manifest a lot more happiness, a lot more abundance, a lot more love, a lot more joy. And I call that living life fun, which is rule number one. And with some practice and dedication, you can get so very good at that, that you don't suffer very much at all. Mm. And that's why I call it practical enlightenment. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect, it can't be, but it can be really, really close. Mm-hmm. And and that's what this whole thing is about. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. And I, I agree with you. I probably use and teach maybe some slightly different tools than you do, but um, I completely agree that you can get to that state where where life is not such an ex- extreme of ups and downs anymore. And, um, and that's more preferable. So... I want to talk a little bit about your book now because you've written a book about your synthesis process, haven't you? So, yeah. so what makes your book unique? Well, it, it's interesting that you ask that question, uh, Leslie, because if anybody picks it up, and I certainly hope people do give it a try, sometimes within the first four or five pages of the introduction, I say, listen, there's nothing new in this book. And I'm sure readers are going to go, what? You know, <laughs> why did I buy it? But the truth of the matter is, you know, the tools and the way humans have been behaving are, have, are pretty consistent, and they have been for a very, very, very long time. And as you said, you have a slightly different set of tools, perhaps, than I do, although if we if we scratch the surface, we probably find they're yeah. very, very similar. Mine are very ancient, like yours are, I suppose. It, exactly. Yeah. You know, the, these are tools and techniques that have been in, around for thousands and mm. thousands of years, uh, healing um, our forebears. So... Uh, the, uh, I've lost my train of thought for just a second. You're telling us it, that your book wasn't unique. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's nothing really new in my book. I, what makes it unique, I think, is the perspective. I found a way to present this, this process in a way that people understand and, and tend to gravitate to. It makes sense to the common person. Uh, I, I'm not preachy at all, and, and I, I'm doing my work in a preachy way. It's very informal. It's very, very casual. I, I inject as much humor into the process as possible. And so what I think is unique about my book is the fact that, unlike many others, uh, it's not preachy, and it says, look, here's, here's how and why you got the way you are. Here's how we all are the way we are. Here's a set of tools, and if you use them, and I'm going to show you how to use them, you can really start making some changes in your life. And by the way, here's the process through which to use the tool. And it was just presented in a way that people seem to gravitate to. And I think what makes it unique, it was based on 
thousands of actual clinical cases, which is how the whole process came to be. Uh, it was an analysis of over a thousand clinical cases, and I tried to see what the common denominators were for, for the people that did really, really well, the people that did okay, and those very few people, fortunately, because if there were too many of them, I wouldn't be in business, those very few clients that didn't do well at all. And I analyzed a thousand cases, and I looked for the common threads, and that was the basis of the beginning of the synthesis process and also the way the book is put together. It's like having a private session with me along the way. Mm-hmm. And along the way, I share stories of real people, everyday people like you and me, and, and I have my own issues. There was a time in my life when I was not a very happy camper, and I, I, I uh, gladly share part, part of my story with my readers because I don't want them to think that I think I'm some guru or some you know, person, I'm up here and you're down there. I'm just saying, here's a way that really, really works for thousands of people. You might want to give it a try. So if there's anything unique, it's the perspective through which it's mm-hmm. presented, not so much the stuff, because the yeah. stuff's been around forever. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And I think that that authenticity is what is truly helpful and, and truly needed, um, because we are all human, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Most of us. Yeah, we we are all human, and you don't, you know, the Buddha and Jesus and all, all of those people had to deal with life on this planet like we do, <laughs> you know, and they were masters because they developed strategies and ways of, 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 of dealing with the ups and downs of life. Yeah, they just tapped into the quantum physics a lot earlier than our modern day scientists. Mm. So Precisely. We're going to go to another break, but then we will be back and um, we might ask you a few listeners questions. Welcome back, listeners. You are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and Corey and our guest this evening, who is Dr. John McGrail. And we've been talking to him about his book about the synthesis effect. And, uh, and now we've reached that time in the show, listeners, where we like to help you with your questions. Have you got some good questions that Dr. John can help us with? Oh, definitely. Now, you've got to remember, Dr. John, that a lot of these people that are sending in their questions are sending them in to get a psychic <laughs> la- intuitive or an intuitive look at at uh, yeah. at it which you can give them as well but from a different po- uh, from a different point of view but still very helpful i'm sure and actually this is from a leslie not the same leslie though um what can i do to increase my physical health levels hmm. Well, and, and you, you you were telling us that you help athletes um and with the physical performance so what would you advise somebody like that well the first thing would be to take a look at what you're not doing that you could be doing because obviously the 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 easiest way to increase your physical levels is to exercise more perhaps get a personal trainer and up your level of intensity now if you're not doing that there's probably a reason for that and it's probably something internal that that internal resistance we talked about And if you can identify, and again, you may need some assistance in doing this, what that internal resistance is about, then you have, there are lots and lots of ways, whether it's my process or hypnotherapy or uh, or there are many therapeutic ways to, to get through that internal resistance so that you feel compelled to make those choices, that you're motivated to take it to the next level, that moving more and putting more exertion into your, into your, uh, program actually is something that's positive rather than something that you're you're resisting or that you feel is a drudge. Mm -hmm. So that would be what I would advise uh, when I work with any athletes, whether it's somebody that just wants to drop 20 pounds and it's an elite pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers or another team that that wants to get to that next level. We find out where the resistance is, what's keeping you from doing that. And then we eliminate that and replace it with that compelling desire, that excitement about getting to the next level and beyond. And once you take that attitude, you're unstoppable. Mm. Yes, thank you. And uh, I definitely see that you're on the right track there. I mean, I I took a quick intuitive look at this lady, and I I would agree that um, it looks like she's having some 
issues processing certain life experiences that she's been through. And if we had her on the phone, I'd ask her whether she's actually got some digestive issues going on as a result of um, sort of not being able to take in and process certain circumstances. And so I was seeing that um, there was something going on with the energy distribution around her body, but, but the core of it was resistance, like you say. And, of course, resistance is nothing more than a blockage of energy somewhere. Mm-hmm. So I think we're exactly on the same path mm-hmm. there. Yeah, cool. Definitely. I once uh, had a had a coaching uh, client that I said, well, I asked them, I asked them two questions. And I said, well, who's, your, who's your most unfavored charity? And they gave it the name. I said, okay, now fine. Write me a check for $1,000 and don't date it. And the first day you missed the gym... We'll uh, we'll send that off to them. You know what? They never they never missed a day. But isn't that what you're talking about? It, you know, just replacing that one concept with another concept that's much healthier. Yeah, lots of times people hold themselves back because they have a limiting belief that they learned very early on. You know, mm-hmm. if your program, for instance, you know, if you have a parent that says, you know, you'll be lucky if you make fifty thousand dollars a year. That's as good as it gets. Well, if that becomes your program, that's your ceiling. That's and it. I have had so many clients, it won't, they'll, they'll get above that ceiling and find a way to get back to it because that's that comfort level, that familiarity we were talking about. So with Leslie, uh, I think you're very, you're very correct, and I think we're both on the same track. There's something energetically holding you back. It could be a limiting belief. It could be something energetically within you. And it, when you eliminate that, Nothing can stop you. Because yeah. Richard Bandler says it, if one person can do it, anybody can do it. And it's true. Exactly. Uh, and I actually think you you hit another nail on the head there, John, where you said what you were talking about, self-worth and deserving. I think that is actually part of the issue that's going on with this lady. So now she knows. Mm. All right, next one, Corey. Okay, this is from Chris in the UK. And uh, Chris wants to know, Will I learn to love myself? And this is a female, Chris. Will I learn to love myself? Interesting question. Mm-hmm. So how can we well, ha- help her love herself? <laughs> well, uh, if Chris is a she or, or a he, it really doesn't matter, uh, I would remind you that we are all born completely, totally, absolutely in love with ourselves unconditionally and in love with anyone that wants to bestow it upon us. Uh, unconditional love is our natural state of being. We learn conditional love. We learn to devalue ourselves. We learn our limiting beliefs. No one is born that way. And so what I would say is that, again, if we can identify how and when you learned not to unconditionally love yourself, where that came from, and it probably came from somewhere in childhood, that's where most of us learn these things, our limitations, then you can see that it's a fallacy, and you can return to that state of natural, unconditional love, perfectly formed and vastly abundant self-esteem that we all enter this lifetime with. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I would say that's also a huge part of what I do with almost all my clients. It's always part of it, is learning to, to love ourselves again. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, I'm seeing, Chris, that... Um as John says, it's it, it, it's some belief systems that were laid down in your childhood. Uh, I'm seeing it partly to do with your mom and partly to do with school, experiences at school, and all to do with these ideals of perfection that you were, these expectations that you were meant to live up to that originally came from outside of you, but then became internalized within you and that you then hold yourself up against and judge yourself um, when you don't live up to those expectations which ultimately aren't even your own uh, desires and what you want for your life Um, and so I'm seeing that yeah and then and also results in like we were saying to the previous person self-worth stuff not feeling good enough so um, and comparing yourself to others and so letting go of the self-judgment, letting go of the need to be perfect, uh, realizing that you are love. Ultimately, you are love. You are part of source energy. You are love. So you can't be anything else. And so um, that's what I'm seeing. 
So do we have time for one quick one? Yes, I think so. Yeah. And by the way, for Chris, uh, there's an old song that says, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. So just love the one you're with. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> and Christopher Morley, who said, there's only one success to live your life in your own way. Exactly. And Chris, all of those limitations that Dr. Leslie described and that I described are surmountable, I promise you. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, here's one from Nancy in Toronto. And... Uh, what can I do right now to alter the financial trajectory of my life? You were just, well, touch- Nancy, you, you were just touching on that a little bit earlier. Well, exactly. We're talking about the ceilings that we are programmed with. Um, there is more money in the world than any of us could ever spend, and uh, it, it often seems as though we create these energetic limitations as to what we're worth and how much we can uh, attract and so what has to happen, and I don't know exactly how you're going to do this, but I, do, I can tell you again that it is very, very doable. I work with this a lot, and I'm sure Dr. Leslie does as well. You have to change your attitude about money. You're coming at it from an energy of lack, an energy of insufficiency, and instead you have to focus on an energy of abundance. You have to focus on how wonderful it would feel to have all the money you ever wanted. And you have to create that energy within you, even though you don't have it yet. I know that's not your reality. But in order to create a new reality, you have to create the energy of that reality first. So identify your resistance or your, your, uh, the source of your, uh, your attitude toward insufficiency. Change your energy to one of abundance. Start thinking about and really spend some time every day imagining how wonderful it's going to be. It's going to be. It is that I am creating this incredible financial abundance and get yourself into that delightful feeling and you're just smiling. That is creating an energy that you are projecting into the universe. And as we talked about a little bit before, we don't have a lot of time to get into this, but the energy you put out has an awful lot to do with the energy you attract back. And those two steps will help you switch your belief system and as you switch your belief system and begin believing that you deserve to have the abundance you want, you will, you will see that the universe will provide the ways to achieve it. One additional thing, and that is choose. It looks like you're having, diff- you're having a bunch of different opportunities and you're not wanting to choose one because you, might, you think that you might lose the others. But you have to choose. Physical reality is limited by time and space. <laughs> Um, you the spiritual consciousness are not limited by time and space but when you're operating in physical reality you have to make choices and focus and I'm seeing that part of your problem is that you're just um, your energy is um, unfocused and scattered because um, well what about this what about this what about that what about that Um, so Ah. make a choice (laughs) all right well we unfortunately we are at the end of the show so um John, if our listeners want to get a hold of you, how can the, and, and if they want a copy of your book, how can they go about doing that? Well, thank you so very much for that opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> if they can Google me, first of all. If you Google Dr. John McGrail, um, I will come up. There's another fellow named John McGrail that's a psychiatrist. I'm the, I'm the one that's got no hair. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you then, you then uh, you know, can find all my websites. But I do have two websites. Um, if you're more interested in hypnotherapy, www.hypnotherapylosangeles, all one word, all written out, hypnotherapylosangeles.com. That's more geared toward my everyday clinical practice. Uh, there's another website, Dr. John McGrail, my name, drjohnmcgrail.com, which is more about the synthesis process. The book is available on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com, uh, both in paperback and ebook, it's had its run in the stores, and it won't come back out into the stores until we do a second printing, and I don't know when that's going to be. But it's available online at Amazon or Barnes and & Noble. And if anybody wants to reach me personally, just go to one of my websites. My email address is there. My phone number is there. And if anyone calls me, uh, while you will have uh, an operator answer the phone, you will get a personal response back from me. I don't, unfortunately, have the time to answer every call that comes in, but I do return every call personally. So if Leslie or Chris or any of the folks that had questions have more questions, you can reach out to me through email or, or a phone call, and uh, you will hear back. I, I make that pledge to every audience, and, and I stand by that. And I'd just like to thank you so very much for this opportunity. It's been a delight and a joy sharing this hour with you, uh, Dr. Leslie and Corey. 
Oh, thank you so much. It, we've Same enjoyed here. having you on the show, and we wish we had more time because there would be a lot more questions that we would love to ask you. And so thank you so much for sharing your perspective and, and, your, and your work and for helping some of our listeners. Well, thank you. And if you ever want to do it again, just let me know. I would be delighted. Oh, you, we got you. We will. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So much. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much. <laughs> Well, bye, li- bye. bye. bye, bye well, listeners, you've been listening to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and with Corey. And uh, that's it, folks. Another show. We've reached the end of another show. Uh, but we will be bringing you more fabulous interviews and discussions about metaphysics and spirituality through the Christmas holiday season and into the new year. Take yeah. care, everyone. And bye, everyone. You've been listening Great to holiday season Unlocking today. Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and Corey on CIVL on 101.7 FM. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to another Unlocking Your Truth podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. For more information, go to her website at dr. L-E-S-L-E-Y P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S dot com that's Dr. Leslie Phillips dot com where you can ask questions or send her an email and there's many free gifts on there for you as well. Come back again.